Okay, so we are back with the um, uh, radiodity, radiodity, um, also known as the uh, BF888S series or uh, uh, GA2S or uh, Luiton or Luton. I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, uh, LT458, about uh, Fang BF C5, <coughs> arc shell. Uh, AR5, and so on. So, um, right now I'm talking about uh, programming these radios for uh, UHF business um, uh, it inherent, excuse me, uh, itinerant, excuse me, itinerant frequencies, or low power frequencies. Now, there are a, um, there's a series of, of frequencies that are uh, commonly referred to as the uh, the color dot or dot star um, frequencies. Uh, so let me pull those up. Okay, so let me zoom in on this real quick. So these are your your dot stars these are the most common ones on uhf four six four five zero zero brown dot four six four five five yellow dot four six four five and then we've got four six seven seven six two five j dot four six seven eight one two five k dot Four six seven eight five silver star, four six seven eight seven five gold star, four six seven nine zero zero red star, four six seven nine two five blue star. You'll notice these are two watt maximum power frequencies. Um, you'll also notice that uh, in between, um, on uh, in between these these frequencies. Uh, the main ones, there's these sliver frequencies, so 4645625. Um, basically, the, the whole point of this is you want to, you don't want to, you do not want to use these frequencies, 4645, 46455. Um, if you can avoid it, avoid using these ones and uh, avoid also using. Um, Four six, excuse me, four five one dot eight, four five one dot eight one two five, uh, four five six dot eight, four five six dot eight one two five. Now, the reason behind this is the same reason why you want to avoid using uh, four sixty four dot five and four sixty four dot five five. Now, these are uh, like I said, itinerant frequencies. However, four sixty four five, four sixty four five five. 451.8 and 451.8125, um, these may be used as portable repeaters. So there is a chance that in your area, um, somebody could be running a, uh, a portable or temporary repeater on these frequencies. Now, the 469.5, 469.55, and uh, 456.8 and 456.8125 frequencies can be used for simplex or as the input for the, if you know your band plan, you know UHF is five megahertz uh, offset. Um, they'd be used as the input for the temporary repeater and uh, you don't wanna be transmitting on somebody's input frequency. So uh, what I've done is I've put together a frequency plan here and this is just an example, um, using the low power frequencies that are not ones that can be used for repeater operations. These are simplex only. So you've got, you know, 464, 5, 5, So when you put this in order by frequency, you can see, um, you know, and this is good practice. Uh, you see how these are two, how these are not, not, you know, one channel next to each other because one channel up would be 462.775. But 
we'll call them next to each other. It's a good practice not to put these next to each other in the channel numbering and not to use the same tone or code. Um, so, you know, right here we've got, you know, 4628625, 4628875, and then again, 4644875, And uh, when you're, another piece of, another good practice is to use these non-standard tones um, if you can. So, you know, right here we've got all the, you know, 50 tones. So the non-standard tones, the technically 69.3 is, is technically one of them. Uh, sorry about the focus. Um, and then you've got to go all the way up to... One fifty nine point eight, one sixty five point five, one seventy one point three, one seventy seven point three, one eighty three point five, one eighty nine point nine, one ninety six point six, one ninety nine point five. Um, those are the non standard tones. Do not recommend using a tone over two hundred hertz if you can avoid it. Um, just because it often will come through on the audio. Uh, and especially, you know, because you're, you are going to probably have to use frequencies. Like these are the, these are, you know, J dot, these are the color dot frequencies, 467, 7625, 467, uh, 8125. So what I did was I did not make them channels one, two, or three. Um, but with these frequencies that are next to 464.500, um, and 464.55, uh, I used a non-standard tone. Same with the frequencies. Well, actually, no. The fre these are next to 469.5 and 469.55. So it would be good practice to use the non-standard tone here, too. Um, so we'll use 189.9. And what do you say? 177.3. Um, and obviously this is going to be narrow FM. Um, and then we'll go back to uh, channel in order. So this is what that looks like. Um, and, uh, you know, it depends on what you want to do with the radios. How many radios are you going to have? A good rule of thumb is that even if you've got two radios... You want to at least have one, two, three, four different frequencies, four different channels to work with. And I'm not talking about the same frequency with different tones. I'm talking about four different frequencies. Um, a primary, a secondary, uh, or and a tertiary or an alternate, and then a, a, a spare or a backup. Um, you know, these are 16-channel radios. It's pretty pretty common design so 16 channels gives you enough to work with with um you know four or five different groups and still have uh enough you know talk around channels uh to um to use if there's interference um you know if you've got there's somebody else using the same frequency or there's another source of interference somehow um, you can switch frequencies and if you've got, you know, say a job site where you've got 100 radios, um, you've got enough different channels to work with uh, that you're not going to be interfering with yourself. And uh, the bottom line is, is in urban, urban areas, um, you know, the popular frequencies are, are going to be busy. Uh, and I'm not talking about, well, you know, I put a radio on... 464.55 and I let it sit there for two seconds and I didn't hear anything. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about parking a radio on a frequency for days. Ideally, you know, from a high elevation location and listening. And if you do that in any kind of urbanized area, you'll know that these frequencies are busy. Um, downtown where I live... 464.5, 464.55, uh, those frequencies uh, have several different users on them. And uh, 
that's another you know piece of advice. Don't use the default um, frequencies and, and tones. Even if you use the default frequencies, do not use the default tones. Um, and if you're saying, oh, well, I want to make my radios talk to my Motorola radios that I have, well, I'll make a video on that at some time, some point as well. Um, how to translate the, you know, frequency ID and code ID to an actual frequency and an actual code. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just loading these onto the radio using the Chirp software. And yes, they, it thinks it's a Baofeng BF8888 because it is the same firmware. Um, but these are actually the GA2S. And again, this is just an example. Um, you could do the same thing with the FRS frequencies. And uh, again, you want to not use the common popular ones uh, because they're going to be busy. And a good idea, a good way to do that is to kind of do a site survey for your area, figure out which frequencies are in use and, and uh, which tones are in use. And if you have to use a frequency that somebody else uses, you want to make sure, um, you know, when are they using it? Is it the beginning of the day and the end of the day because it's a school? Is it, you know, 8 to 6, Monday through Friday, or 7 to 7, Monday through Friday, in business hours? Is it late in the evening? Um, is it just on weekends? Is it just during special events? Um, like, is it an event management company? Um, you know, there's several frequencies, at least in this area, that are only going to be busy on the weekends. So if you're going to be using the radio mostly during the, you know, business hours, then those are good options. Not for your primary frequency, but for maybe your one of your secondary frequencies. Hello, radio check. Hello, radio check. One, two, one, two, radio check. Radio check, one, two, one, two, radio check. Um, so something that I did not enable, but is something that is good to enable is uh, is busy channel lockout. And what busy channel lockout does is it, um, sorry, I'm putting the uh, radio on scan here. Uh, give me the frequency, please. What is this thing doing? Oh, because it's... Squelch is open. Alright. Radio check. One, two, three, four, five. Radio check. So, say there's another signal on 464.5625. Right, but it's not transmitting the uh, the same tone that you're using. It's transmitting. Uh, we'll just say it's transmitting, you know, a DCS. You'll see that green light come on, which you won't hear in the audio. Now, busy channel lockout would prevent you from transmitting if there was another user on the frequency. So if the channel's busy, without busy channel lockout, it's gonna sound like this if there's somebody else on the channel and their signal's strong. Hello, hello, radio check one, two, one, two. Hello, radio check one, two. Let me turn the audio up, volume up here. Hello, radio, what is this thing doing? Radio check one two one two. Radio check one two one two. Uh, radio check one two one two. Radio check one two one two. So channel's clear, right? And I'm talking. And, uh, 
the other station is on. So that's basically squelch capture. Certainly, because it's stronger, but... Uh... Yeah. So, generally what you're going to experience is, you know, this is going to be an intermittent thing. Uh, but if this green light is coming on all the time, use that side button, monitor, um, see what is there. Uh, because if it's somebody else using the frequency, if it's happening all the time, then, then you need to change frequencies. Uh, because even if you can't hear them and they can't hear you because you guys are both running tone squelch or, um, you know, uh, CTCSS or DCS, PL or DPL, whatever you want to call it, uh, this the RF is still interfering with e with itself with each other. Um, and uh, what Busy Channel Lockout will do is if there's something on the frequency, it won't let you transmit, and that is a good feature to have. Uh, it's technically required under FCC rules um, for both Part 90 and Part 95. Um, you have to listen before you transmit. Um, but yeah, so that's the end of this video for now. Thank you for watching, and there'll be more to come. Have a good one.